So depending on what you're making, you're gonna use different size pinch pots, all right? Like I said, with both of these pinch pots for the base, they're two very different sculptures. I'll kind of help you guys out with the size of clay that you wanna use. Um, also type into your sketch what clay color you think you might wanna use. That might help me a little bit as well. So I know I showed you like a really quick video on Friday, but I wanna go in and really go over pinch pots. They seem really simple. Sometimes they're a little bit more difficult. Try to get like even amounts of clay and I'm just gonna kinda like bounce it back and forth between my hands. A lot of times people wanna do something like this. Make sure you're doing this because what it's what it's doing is it's really compressing the clay together to get rid of any of those little air pockets in it. Smooth up some of these little creases in the clay as you go. And then just bounce it back and forth. Now, the longer you kind of like work the clay when you're creating a pinch pot, it'll start to dry out and crack on you a little bit. I'll show you what to do if that starts to happen, but we want to try to avoid that. Uh, let me take a little bit off of here. Then go in, same thing with our other one. Now, if you have something really odd in shape, um, you could definitely build it as a solid and then hollow it out. And I'll kind of go through, look at your sketches. That's why I need sketches. And I'll leave feedback for you guys. All right, I got two balls of clay. These are some other little examples that I found kind of hanging out around my room. Um, this one was made by two, like one pinch pot here, and then we attached a second up here so it wasn't completely combined. And this one, the pinch pot was the head, and then the body we built separately and we hollowed that out. So those are two little examples, pinch pots. You wanna make sure that you're holding it in your palm the whole entire time. I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm going to go about three fourths of the way down. And I wanna use my whole entire hand to pinch. I don't wanna pinch with one finger like that. It's gonna start to get uneven. Once it opens up enough, I could go in and I could start to use both hands. And we will be smoothing these out. Take your time when you're working on these. You could even go in and smooth it up. And you wanna have like a really nice uh, lip around the edge so that you could attach them together really well. Also, keep in mind when you're making these, uh, the general shape of your either person or animal or whatever you're creating. I'm gonna kind of create one of my pinch pots a little bit um, more rounded in the back and keep this part a little bit more pointed because I am gonna be turning it into a fish. And this is just gonna be my base. And this clay is super soft that I'm working with. So if you find that it's really too soft, you might wanna just kinda of let it sit aside for a few minutes. But also always add a little bit of extra clay into it and smooth that out. Do, 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 do. All right. Now, you can tell that this is not completely even. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to worry about that when I go ahead and attach them together, smooth up any of like these little bumps on here. Second pinch pot. Remember, you really want to back and forth in between your palms, three fourths of the way down, and make sure that you are holding it here because you're not sure exactly how you're going to want to have it stand up where you want to flatten it so it's best to keep them nice and rounded and then you know assess it and decide where you want to switch it up i have a few pinch pot videos on attaching um some different forms I know I showed you, you know, how you could kind of pinch it into like a little boat-like shape and then attach those two flatter pieces together. But this is probably going to be the standard for a lot of your guys' um, works. And just because we're creating a hollowed out form does not mean that this is what it's going to look like in the end. Um, we can you know, definitely scoop away from these, add things on. So this is, this is not, you know, the shape. This is just a hollowed surface and then we're gonna shape it from there. We're gonna use this as like the base of a sculpture. Kind of like way back, you know, let's think like ancient Rome, ancient Greece, where they would take like marble and carve away a statue. Essentially that's what we're doing. But with pinch pots, we're going to be finding a shape, adding on, carving away. All right, a few things you guys can do once you get your two pinch pots. You guys should have a few different rib tools in your kits. And I'm looking for a metal one. There we go. You should have a few different rib tools. I personally like working with the metal one a lot. The blue ones are really nice too. Um, they're made out of like a really nice like silicone plastic. But what we want to do is go in and we want to attach these together. When you're creating any hollowed out space that's a little bit larger, you can put some paper towels in here. They will burn out in the kiln. Because these are smaller sculptures, I don't think we need that. But when we get to larger things, I'll address that. I'm gonna just kind of pat these down just a little bit, get a really nice area to attach. So like I said on Friday, I did not send you guys home with pin tools. But you can use your metal rib tool to go ahead and make some little scoring marks. And just to remind you guys, the reason we make score marks is so that the slip can go ahead and seep into those little cracks on both sides. It's going to create a much stronger bond. And you'll notice my pinch pots are fairly thick. You know, they're not like super, super thin. You wanna make sure that you have a nice base, but I'm gonna go ahead in and I'm gonna carve away a lot of this. So that's a plus two in having something that's not too thin. If you feel like parts are too thin, you can always add a little bit of extra clay to it and set it up like that. So just for example, I have like a little crack on the top here. I could just take a little, little piece of clay, smooth it in. You could do the same exact thing if you have a piece 
that is a little too thin, you could just add a little bit of extra clay. But take your time making these pinch pots just because this is gonna be primarily what you're gonna be working off of. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some slip. Like I said, it should take about 20 minutes to really start to form. And it's been about 20 minutes and now I got my slip. All right, so that's nice, good slip. Make sure that you let your clay dry out a little bit. Let it soak and by the time you're ready to do this, have a good slip. Only put slip on one side just because you don't want it to get too mucky. And I like to put it towards like the interior. And then when I'm all ready, I should have approximately something that's gonna meet up. And I think you'll see like this side is a little bit more rounded and this one's a little more pointed. But I have a lot I'm gonna really add on and sculpt to my fish. And I'm really going to combine these together, apply quite a bit of pressure so that I have a nice hollow form. If you guys have a lot of clay on the sides here, you could go in and try to smooth it together like that. If it starts to cave in on you a little bit, I would recommend using a coil instead. We're gonna do coiling a lot later in class. Not a lot later, I guess in like a week or two, two a week and a half. But essentially you just really compress the clay between your hands. You're not gonna need a large coil. If you wanna do it in two separate um, pieces, you could do that as well. But I'm giving myself enough space and I'm really rolling that back and forth. I'm going to attach this on. It's gonna look almost like a little planet. Really kind of compress it in. And then I'm gonna smooth it in both directions. So this way, and this is gonna give you actually some practice for your coil pieces as well because you're gonna be smoothing in two different directions when you're attaching your coils on. Don't apply too much pressure that it's gonna cave in, but enough so that it's gonna have a really nice attachment. Essentially, you don't want to see that coil. You want it to be all smooth, all blended together, and like one solid piece. So this is step one, creating a hollow, hollow space. Once you get your coil on, you can go in. I like to use the metal rib and you could really smooth it up if you want to. Play around with that. Um, I don't really like the wooden tool for smoothing the, these particular shapes but the plastic one works nice too. It'll get rid of any of like the extra clay that's not gonna be smooth. And just continue until you have almost like I said, a potato shape. All right, then we're gonna work from there. So I'm gonna continue to smooth this in, uh, you know, get a really nice hollow shape but I need your sketches and uh, we're gonna be starting in class for a hybrid and then I expect you guys at home um, to be starting tomorrow remotely, all right? And I'm gonna kind of check in on you guys periodically, um, whether it be sending me a picture on our mind or uploading a image to Google Classroom. Remind is easier because I could go in and kind of like mark up your picture and be like, move this here a little bit, you know, so. If you want to do it that way, we could do it that way. Just smooth, smooth, smooth until the whole entire thing is finished and it should look something like this. Tomorrow I'll go in and we'll start to alter it a little bit, okay?